Turn your Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians. Would you do that? 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> Good to be in the Lord's house, worship with you this morning. Corinthians is where we're going to be. This morning, um, I have to share my heart with you. You're a pastor and you're a pastor for a long time. I have to live and have integrity and honesty. So I've got to share some things with you. I've wrestled this message. And I will be loving and tactful all the way through. Um, I've laid awake at night, praying, wrestling over this. And um, trusting the Lord. Wednesday is a biannual conference. We have two conferences a year other than call conferences we've had. I've always, always tried to keep business out of Sunday morning. Sunday morning is not for business today. Sunday morning is for worshiping the Lord, our Lord and our, our King. So I've always done that. There's a few times that I maybe should have said something and I didn't. I just think people, if they're interested, you come to conference and you find out the business of the church. And if I don't say something, I'm afraid that I will be considered trying to slide something in somewhere. And I certainly am not doing that. I just think people need to be at conference and find out the business of the church. I mean, that Sunday morning we're worshiping, we're praising, and I want you to see a, a great God, and beside Him there is just none other. Amen. And so the executive committee is going to bring some issues to you that uh, they're asking for some changes to be made. And um, I, I sort of need to share them with you. Now, a few weeks ago, Brother Stephen Waits came to me and shared that I um, believed it was time to, to step down. He has a heavy schedule. Steve, I know you have a heavy schedule. But a lot of people here may not know your schedule. You work in Birmingham every day where he's the chief clinical officer. Is it Care? Very um, demanding position. He's also, many of you know, the president of the Oxford City Council a very demanding position. What you see up here is not what goes into a psalm service. It's behind the scenes. It's coordinating. It's pulling everything together. It's hours of pulling things together. What takes place up here is Steve leads and Steve pulls everything together. And, you, and he'll still be here. He'll still be with us. He'll still be in the praise band. He'll still be leading. The, out of five or six songs that we lead, understand, Steve may lead one. He'll turn to Tammy to lead one. He'll turn to Autumn to lead one or April or, or, or whoever it is up here. He'll turn to my, let the, them lead. And he'll turn to them and, and let the, he'll still be up here singing and leading. Because of the heavy demands. And he doesn't want to step out and he loves you and loves the church. But it, he just feels like it's, it's time. We got together and we've talked and I know we've certainly prayed. But um, we brought Matt Martin's name to the executive committee. First of all, the, the executive committee had to accept Steve's resignation, and then we had to accept, then we had to make following recommendations. And that's what the executive committee does. The building committee does the building, the stewards do the finances, the deacons do the spiritual, the executive committee, they look at the oversight of the church, they cast vision, they, that's what they're doing their job when they make recommendations to you. And we recommend to hire Mr. Matt Martin as a part-time worship leader at Edgewood Church with the same job description as Brother Stephen Waits at 10 hours a week. Now I know, I know Matt well. I know that a prophet's not without honor in his own country, Jesus said. We understand that. He brings, I have a resume in front of me and a lot of that, but I know that Matt's been part of this church for 25 years. I think he came when he was about six years old. Matter of fact, look at his dad's here. He subs for Steve on Sunday mornings for years now. That knows the heartbeat of the people of Edgewood. He's faithful to every service. He's usually the first one here, one of the last ones to leave. He's usually setting this up or in the, in the gym setting things up. 
He's led the ministry of elevation, and he knows Edgewood Church is not elevation, but he's led that ministry for over four years with integrity and honesty. He knows the sound system and the setup. He's held bands together. He can work in office on Mondays and staff. We will bring that to you Wednesday night. Now I know um, he's family. I know. And, um, but he's more than qualified. And if not, we wouldn't be having, if he wasn't qualified, we wouldn't have this discussion or me sharing this. Churches, as a matter of fact, over a month ago, his local church in town, local church, asked him to be there um, worshipfully. So, but he felt like this is where the Lord wants him. Okay, that's enough. We'll share more Wednesday with the whole process. Matter of fact, if I can find the things that are coming up Wednesday, Wednesday night, the executive committee is passing to you. A motion was made and passed unanimously. If I understand correctly, the higher map, Martin is worship leader. Stephen Wade steps down January 2014. Motion was made and passed to add the Women's Fellowship, Women's Ministries, to the job description of Myra, the choir director. Add five hours a week to her schedule. She's been doing it, been doing a great job with the Women's Ministries. The motion was made and passed number three for the Men's Fellowship position to add that to Mr. Barry Thompson. Our Director of Membership Care and the Men's Ministry under him. And then a motion was made and passed to take the fifth Sunday nights of the month off. There's four of those a year. The fifth Sunday nights we have off as a church. Now those things we discussed that evening, okay, they'll be discussed um, in conference. Now, um, I know the blessings of this and I know the, the, the problems of this. God has blessed my family in an amazing way. They're freakishly talented. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I don't have that talent in me. Somehow God just gave it to me. And they love the Lord. And they want to be they want to be used. Amen. And um, so it it just it just it is what it is and it comes to force this way. So God's blessed us. They love it here. They uh, they love you and they want to serve. And that will come, and there'll be discussion, and, and I will step out, and my family will step out that night. Okay, and, and I just think we'll do that for you, sir. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, stand with me for the reading of God's holy word. Guys, get him, those are a little bright. I don't know how they work out there. It may be shining a little bit much, and it may be a little bit much for you all. No, it's a little bit bright up there. Okay, it's, yeah. I, it's fine. Thank you. First Corinthians 1, we'll start at verse 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. And Sosthenes, our brother. Under the church of God, which is in Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, sanctified, set apart, and made holy. With, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. That in everything you are enriched by Him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we see how many times He uses Jesus Christ in here, that He just says His name, reminding us what's important, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, by my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now, now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I, I'm of, I like Apollos, or Cephas, and of Christ. Is Christ divided? No. Was Paul crucified for you? No. Were you baptized in the name of Paul? No. I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. Lest any should say that I baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know, I know not whether I baptized any other. Verse 17. 
For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Before we pray, before we pray, Steve, thank you for leading this church in excellence. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for helping carry us and leading us to, the, to God's throne. Thank you for us. Would you do thank you? Thank you. Everything you do is with grace and excellence, Steve. This church is blessed to have you. Thank you. Jesus, thank you for people that you bring for reasons and seasons sometimes we don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for a church that, Lord, that holds on to you, holds on to each other. Just like our family at times when my family has to go through things and we have to pray together and talk a little bit and adjust. Lord, when we pray and we talk together and adjust, we pray your will be done. I pray that as a pastor, we pray that as every Christian here, your will in this place. Father, I, I, the pastor and the, the shepherd leader, I pray, but what I want is your plan for this church. Your best. Your best, Lord. That's what I pray. Lord, so many times I've walked the aisles, and I pray that you would fill this church with people that are hungry for you, that are hungry to praise you and to love you. Thank you for this morning, Lord, last Sunday, the praise that we have for you. Bless now what I have to share. Help it always to be the word in your precious name. Amen. Then be seated. I want to preach to you a message I've simply entitled Marks of Maturity. Marks of, of Maturity. Our spiritual growth needs to be very intentional. And I don't see that a lot of times. Matter of fact, I, I think this. I think there's a lot of people that think the spiritual life, their growth is just going to happen nonchalantly. It's going to happen by itself. That your spiritual growth, all of a sudden you're going to be walking with the Lord. And as you get older, you're going to grow spiritually wise and spiritually mature. I tell you what happens as you grow older. You grow older. That's it. You ache and you hurt a little bit and you just grow older. Some people grow older without growing more spiritual. And what we have to do is as we grow, we grow in grace. We grow older with God's Holy Spirit guiding us and, and helping us along the way. So, so we've got to grow. And that was part of the issue here with the, with the Corinthians. He said, you've got, to, you've got to grow. The Corinthians, if you know anything about them, of course, Paul planted the church. He started the church. He stayed with the church. He loved the church. He wrote some say four epistles. Some of them are combined or something. They we have the two epistles. And, and he's writing them. And, and the church is, is in a, a very secular, very worldly area. And he's writing them and he's saying, you've, you've got to be as one. You've got to have unity. And you've got to have love for one another. They were, they were all divided. They were divided over the preachers that they liked. And they were divided over, there was immorality in the church. They were divided over having a communion service. And they were divided over all of these different issues. And just read Corinthians. He's dealing with issue and issue and issue. And they were all divided. And he's saying here, you cannot be divided. He said, you've got to come together. Matter of fact, on the screen, chapter 1, verse 2. He says this, unto the church of God, which is a Corinth, to them that are sanctified, they're set apart, they're made holy, called to be saints. With all that in every place, called upon the name of the Jesus Christ, our Lord. Did you see it? Both theirs and ours. Called to be saints, with all that in every place, called upon the name of the Lord. He's writing to a church here. He's writing to the church of Corinth, just like you write into a church. It's got to be read in the church. But it's also for individuals. It's to those who are called to be saints with all that in every place called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This, these are words for everybody. Every Christian. These are words for everybody. And so I, I sort of challenge you this morning, and I certainly challenge myself to go, to go inward this morning. Where are you at spiritually? Are you a mature Christian? Have I grown spiritually? Have I gone deeper in the Lord like I should? Read the chapters. Read the chapters. Let me give you from the first few chapters three marks 
of spiritual maturity. And what you have to do, and what I have to do, is look at myself and say, am I this person? Number one, it's found on the screen, it's found in chapter one, verse 10. It's a mark of unity. You can tell that you're a mature believer when you want unity, not, not conformity, not uniformity, but unity, not conformity. Not where everybody talks alike and dresses alike and looks alike and acts alike and goes alike. No, no. That's not seen. What's seen is unity and love. What's seen is, is at Corinth and seen in churches are, are people with differences that love the Lord. The mark of being mature spiritually is, is having a difference with somebody and still loving them. Is having a difference with them and still being unified and walking with them. I beseech you. Some translations say beg. Some translations say I appeal to you. Brethren. You'll see the word brethren all through the book of Corinthians. Because he's writing to people who love God. His brothers and sisters in Christ. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you all speak the same thing. That there be no divisions among you. But that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind. And in the same judgment. He says, first of all, church, he says, there's got to be unity in the church. Now, he's about to start, the reason he does that, he's about to go through a book, and he's about to mention all the division, all the differences, all the factions, all the problems and issues that are in the church. As a matter of fact, he starts it, and he says this. Here's the first one he mentions. He says, some of you have a favorite preacher. Some of you like a, have a favorite person. Okay? That you like this person more than this person. Okay? On the screen, verse 12, he says it like this. Some say, now this I say, that every one of you says, I'm a Paul. I like Paul. I, I'm Paul's group. This is Paul's group. This is Apollos group. This is Cephas group, Simon Peter's group. This is Christ's group. I'm going to move over there, aren't you? <laughs> That's not what he said, though. We're going to get to it. Yeah. Okay. He said, I'm with Paul. Paul was the great apostle. And we're following Paul. He's got, he knows Jewish traditions. He knows the Jewish culture, the, the history. We're going to follow Paul. And another group said, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to follow Apollos. He's the orator. He's the intellectual one. He's the one that speaks amazingly. We're going to follow him. He's so smart, we're going to follow this guy. Somebody else says there's Cephas. That's Simon Peter. He's that rugged fisherman. He's that Jewish guy who's I got that background. He's that rugged guy. We're going to follow that guy. And somebody says, yeah, well, that's okay. I, I follow Christ. What he's saying is I don't need anybody else. And that's true because it's Christ and Christ alone is our salvation. But what he is saying there, what he is saying is, I am not going to place myself under anybody's spiritual authority. And that's not seen in Scripture, and that's dangerous. He's saying, I am not going to have any spiritual authority in my life, Christ only. And, and I would say to you, amen, that's fine, always, always go to Jesus Christ. I'll always, it's all about Him. But we should have, whether it's deacons in the church, teachers in the church, the pastor, there's spiritual authority in the church. That's what the Bible says, there's spiritual authority to follow. And Paul wants them to say, don't say it like this. Oh, one's over here, one's over here. He wants them to come together. So what does he do? Does he argue with them? No. He doesn't argue with them. I tell you what he does. Verse 13. He points to Jesus Christ. Was Christ divided? No. Was Paul crucified? He said, you've got to go to Christ. When there's differences and divisions, what do you do? You say, what's this thing all about? It's about Jesus. Amen. It's about Jesus. When there's differences among brothers and sisters, it's about Jesus. Was Paul crucified? No. Not for him. Was, were, were you baptized in the name of Paul? No. And what does he do immediately? He says, there's differences, but you've got to keep your focus on Jesus. Jesus is the one that forgave you. Amen. He's the one that died for you. He's the one that saves you. He's the one that rose again. We have one great, 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 great thing in common. 
And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. All that other stuff, all that other, it's just stuff. That's what the church of Jesus Christ looks like. It looks like it's a group of people who are so different. We have differences in a lot of areas of life, but we all come together because we have everything in common because of Jesus. We're so different, but we're in common because of what Jesus Christ has done. On the screen, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, Paul says, I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. So I didn't come to you bragging about who I was, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and the crucified. He starts his letter not arguing. He starts his letter saying, look to Jesus. With differences and different opinions and issues, always look to Jesus. That's the key. He says in verse 1, there's nothing impressive about me. And in verse 2, he says, there's everything impressive about Jesus. Last week, I wore my pink tie. It looked good. Do you remember? Do you notice my pink tie? Several, several of the men in the church noticed my pink tie. <coughs> made fun of my pink tie. I said, uh, I said, it's okay, real men wore pink. Amen. And, uh, I'm secure in my manliness enough to wear pink. And we just joked about it a little while and had a, a good time with it. But listen, listen. They, of course, they can joke me about it. It's funny. But you know what that is? It's just a preference. It was pink. It was just an opinion. It was just a color. That's, that's all that it was. It was a style. It wasn't a sin if you wear one type, one type color or a different type of color tie. That's, I've seen some Pat Locker's ties and they border. They border. But different styles. Different styles. Listen, we're different. I, I'm going to do it like this. I thought this is a good way to do it this week. Some of you like different sports teams, don't you? <laughs> I'm going to say a team. I'm going to say a team name. And if I say, and you like that team, you clap for them, okay? It's, you, you, you go, yay, or whatever, okay? It's okay. But it's fun. Sachs High School. <laughs> Oxford High School. They do a team, don't they? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. Okay, here we go, here we go. Auburn Tigers. <laughs> Alabama Crimson Tide. <laughs> Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah. Thank you. Here's a Christian in the group. Me and you, man. There's a Christian. Nebraska Cornhuskers. Yeah! Oh my goodness. There's three people and they shout about everybody else. <laughs> okay. I, listen, I, I, uh, how about this then? I, I can't go, I can't go through all this. Matter of fact, I'm gonna have to really move in just a minute. But listen, at the count of three, you say the name of the team you like best. Whatever, whatever sport, whatever city, whatever, whatever okay? High school, college, pro, at the count of three, you say the team you like best. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh, wow, wow, I didn't understand the word you said. I'm, we're all different. We're all different, aren't we? You, you think about that. Okay, let me do, I, I thought about music. What, how many of you like, you can, you can clap here, how many of you like country music? How many do you like easy listening music? Ian Roger Whitaker, huh? How many like classical? Okay. How many like jazz? How many like rap? Really? Really? How many like rock? How many like praise? Yeah. How many like Southern Gospel? Yeah. I like the hymns. Yeah. I think I left one out, but at the count of three, 
At the count of three, everybody say the type of music that they like best, okay? One, two, three. <laughs> Didn't understand a word you said. But you know what it was? It's all different, isn't it? Everybody likes different types. Okay, let me go this route with, with this. Church backgrounds. We have so many different church backgrounds represented here. How many Southern Baptists do we have here? Yeah. You found a home. Glad you're here. How many Pentecostals? Pentecostal. One, two, three, four, five. Praise the Lord. Be happy. Nazarenes. I know we got some Nazarenes in the house. Hey, Nazarenes. Jesus was a Nazarene. Amen. Amen. John was a Baptist, but Jesus was a Nazarene. Here we go. Someone said, Pastor, I got Church of God. Church of God in the house. Yeah, Church got a prophecy, really. Church got a prophecy. We know you. Amen. How many Congregational Methodists in the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all in the back. They're all in the back. Amen. We love you. How many Quakers in the house? I knew we'd get that. That's why I did the gifts for you, man. Here we go. Now you're a Pentecostal Quaker. Somehow we all knew that, too. They don't go hand in hand, but that's okay. How many United Methodists? Hey, there we go. Thank you very much, brother sister. Amen, amen. How many, how many have a, you're a priesters. How many priester backgrounds? That's, that means that you're a, Christ, a Christmas and Easter. Priester. <laughs> Congregational holiness. We're still looking for them. <laughs> okay, and I go. I, just, I could go on and on, but at the count of three, you share what background denominationally you, you grew up or you are. Okay, on the count of three, you just share it. One, two, three. <laughs> I didn't understand a word you said, but you know what we have in common? Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> The King of Kings name. And you say the Lord of Lords name. Because that's who we have in common. And that's what Paul's doing. He's saying you got all these differences. But you got Jesus in common. One, two, three. Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. That's what we have in common. Give the Lord a hand. Differences, they have differences, but we've got Jesus in common. And the issue that divided them, the issue that divided them, it wasn't even a biblical issue. The issue wasn't biblical. It was who do you like more? Do you like Paul better than Apollo, better than Simon Peter? Who do you like? Let's, let's take a popularity contest vote. Paul says, no, no. It's all about Jesus. Did you know, in the last 10 years, the top five difficulties, biggest difficulties in the church, I've written them down, i put them on the screen, they're in the right order, okay? Number one, the past 10 years, the biggest problem in churches today that have divided churches, that have divided churches, has been the music, the style, how to do it? The whole nine yards. The second biggest divider in the church world is the preacher's leadership style. They don't like the way the preacher does things. You learned a long time ago in leadership when you call the shots, you got to take some shots. It's just the way it is. The third biggest problem in church sometimes is how, how to spend the church's money. It's always funny when, when out on the board committee the Stewards have that financial responsibility, and somebody says, this is, this is God's money, and I'm always thinking, no, 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 it's all God's money. If I got it right here, if it's at, at home, in the bank, it's God's money. Right. You're responsible. You're a steward. But that's a difficulty, and it's still, it, it, we've seen it. The church decorations in color, the carpet, the, 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 all of that, the painting, and all of that, the, ch all of the church decorations, and then the fifth problem in churches, is the clothes. People don't like sometimes the clothes people wear. I'm so thankful we haven't had any of those. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We've seen them, haven't we? 
Those issues, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And we've seen them too. What do we do? Jesus. Jesus. We keep going to Jesus. We've got Him in common. We've got styles different. I don't like what so and so wore, and I don't, I don't like it either. Or I don't like this and that, but we've got Jesus in common. But these things, you know what they are? Look at, look. Are these biblical? They're opinions. A lot of that is style and preferences and people's opinions. And people get all hurt and churches divide over what? Opinions. <coughs> now, if it was a biblical issue, matter of fact, there's a biblical issue, I think it's in chapter 5, about immorality in the church. You know what Paul says? It ain't going to happen. If there's a biblical issue, you know what we do? We say, this is what God's Word says about it. Let me think of what it is. When God speaks, we speak. Amen. When this speaks, we speak. When God's silent on it, I'll give you my two cents. I'll give you my opinion. I'll give you what I think about it. But when God's silent on it, He's silent on it sometimes. But when God speaks, we say, thus saith the Lord. And there was an issue of immorality in the church and He took care of it. And there's been times it's been different and we, we, we just, we took care of it. The, the sign of maturity is unity. It's not conformity like me or uniformity. Everybody doesn't have to wear the same clothes or dress like me or worship like me or act like me. But it is unity. So blessed last Sunday we gather at the altar and people come to the altar at this church and it's one of the blessings and marks of this church. I love our altars. Really, I, I used to sit down there so I shouldn't be down there. But I remember times, I remember times we're in a worship service and I'll be right here, somewhere in there, wherever that pew was. <laughs> and I'll look at the altar, and there'll be somebody, somebody pure, poor, praying with somebody that's considered rich. I'll see somebody who's young praying with somebody who's old. I'll see people gathering around people, just shuffling around there, just rubbing their backs. I said, Jesus, you're so good to us. You're so sweet. Uniform. Okay. Unity is what we're looking for. Amen? Yes. Unity. Love one another. Number two, you can tell the mark of maturity. The mark of maturity, number two, is, is biblical authority. This is, maybe I got into it. This is what we go by. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, not, not man's wisdom, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. There's the Bible. There's the Word of God. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. What God says, we stand upon. What the Holy Spirit teaches us and says, we stand upon. You see, a lot of denominations are this way. They're sort of if I like a maybe. We're not sort of if I like a maybe. Where this is the inspired word of God. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God Amen. and is profitable. For doctrine, that tells you what's not right, what's, what's right. For reproof, that tells you what's not right. For instruction, that tells you how to get right. For correction, that tells you how to stay right. That the man of God could be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. Where God says it, that settles it for our lives. You don't, you don't mold this book around your life. You, you mold your life around this book. Amen. That's what we go to. That's, so a mark of maturity is to say, what does the Bible say about this? What does the Bible have to say? In verse 14, here's the way the world looks at it. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. They look at what we do and they look at the word. They, I don't understand it. Well, it's because you're not spiritual. I don't understand this. It's because you're in the flesh. It's a spiritual book. You've got to get in the Spirit. Oh, do I understand? No, 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 I don't understand all of it. But we hunger and thirst after righteousness. We want to know what, the, what God's Word says. I'm simply saying to you, this Word unites us. Amen. 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 We believe it's wisdom. We believe everything it says. The world doesn't. And where it speaks, we speak. Mark of maturity. We always go to the Word of God. Number three. Mark of maturity is the spirit of humility. The spirit of humility. Verses 5 through 7. Paul says, who's Paul? Nobody. Who's Paulus? Nobody. We're just servants, really. Men of servants. Ministers. By whom you believe. Even as the Lord gave to every man. 
I plant it, Apollos watered, God gives the increase. We're just servants. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God gives the increase. You see, it just, we're just servants. That's what we do. That's who we are. We're his children. We're his sons. We praise the Lord for that. But what do we do? We just come alongside and serve. We do our part. We do our part and God does his part. There's no self-promotion in Paul. When, when, when we see that, when we pe see people who are promoting themselves, we're always going, wait, the flags are going up. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It doesn't work that way. Pride makes a person selfish. Pride, Proverbs 13, verse 10. Pride breeds quarrels. The church isn't a place of uniformity. A bunch of people who are exactly alike. No, it's not. But it is a place of unity. We gather. We're different. But because of who Jesus is and what He did in our heart and life, we're alike. What do you need to let go of to get saved? What do you need to let go of? What do you need to sacrifice in your life? To live right. And I'm telling you, whatever you sacrifice, Jesus Christ sacrificed much more to help you to get right. You say, I've got to sacrifice something to be right. Yes, you do. I've got to sacrifice something. Yeah, but Jesus Christ sacrificed his very life so that you could have life. You'll never sacrifice as much as Jesus sacrificed. You hear this morning, you say, Pastor or preacher, I need to pray. I need to know that I'm a Christian. I need to know that, I, uh, that I'm part of the family of God, that I'm on my way to heaven. I want to know. I don't know that shout of that. We'll pray with you. We'll pray while people pray with you. Then number two, I give the invitation. We're going to pray for the church. We're just going to pray for love to obey. Fresh baptism. Fresh baptism of love, grace, and unity. Because it's all about what? Who? Who? Jesus. Let's stand. Our good again, please. As God eyes are closed. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Church, I want us to pray. We're a praying people. I want us to pray God's blessing, God's will, God's best upon all that needs to be done in the next few days, weeks ahead. Would you join me for prayer at the altar? Would several just step out and say, Pastor, we'll be praying. We're going to be praying. Would you join us for prayer? Amen. Would you join us for prayer? It's the Lord's church. We're always reminded. It's not mine. It's not yours. We're just going to pray. Lord Jesus, help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to keep our eyes on you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. God bless you. Help us to keep our eyes on you, Lord. Your best. Your will. Your plan. Others would like to join us, you can join us. If not, you can, you can be seated very quietly and reverently. Prayer, for the matter of fact. We're a people of prayer. We just are. We just are. Thank you so very much. Jesus, we humble ourselves. That's right where we need to be. Still, quiet, and humble before you. Listening to your still, small voice. Yet sometimes, Lord, you'll come in a tornado, sometimes in a storm, as Job with Job, and sometimes with Elijah, still small voice. Speak, Lord, for we listen. We're here. We'll listen. Thank you for this church. All that you have done, praise you. All that you're going to do, praise you. Lord, I'm just reminded through what the Apostle Paul wrote that we're all to come together as one in loving you. We may have differences and preferences and styles and opinions, and that's healthy and that's good if we do it in love. Jesus, that's the great lesson. That's the lesson. That's biblical maturity. That's spiritual maturity. So, Father, help us to go deeper. Be all that you want us to be. Sanctify us, Jesus. Set us apart and make us holy. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us, Jesus, where we need to be cleansed.
Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you for the kingdom of God that's far bigger than we are. Thank you, Jesus, that you still save souls. You still change lives. Thank you. You have a perfect plan. If we want to follow it, want to know it, follow it. And thank you for the precious will of God. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life so that we could have life. Thank you, Father, for every prayer that's being prayed. This is your church, Lord. Bless it and guide it, anoint it, and move us just where we need to be. Thank you for every time we come together, we feel your Holy Spirit. Thank you for when we come together, we feel your love, Lord, here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now prepare our hearts to walk, to walk softly. Prepare us, Lord. Prepare our lives. All the decisions. Your will be done. Your will be done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for every person here. Thank you for their love for you and for one another and their willingness. We're yours. You said the steps of a good man or a woman are ordered by the Lord. Jesus, direct our steps, I pray. This is yours. Thank you for it. Help us to be good stewards of it. Your best. Your plan. Your will. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen.